April the 22nd, 2022. Guys, after three years, CERN has cranked back up. Now, they're running tests now, but they're getting some pretty powerful results. The beams are still not what they call stable because the as they get everything running, get all the kinks worked out, we'll start seeing uh, this increase. But let me tell you what we saw this morning. And by the way, on our website at bpearthwatch.com this morning, Tina linked to an article about CERN cranking back up. And we're going to go look at that article in just a moment. But and, and then that got me looking over at, at their computer sites. And they definitely have, again, three years ago is the last video that we did while CERN was running. A few months back, now I did one, we were looking at um, what's called the cryogenics. And that is has to do with temperature, and they have to keep everything uh, at pretty much, at, I think, around 23 degrees um, Celsius, very cold, the temperature of space, in order for all the components not to overheat in the 17-mile loop of collisions up on the Franco-Swiss border. It was built, uh, it's underground, most of it, and uh, it was built there which is not in there, this is not in their information, but it's built in what's a major area of um, ground lines. In other words, as the shields of our planet interact with solar wind, energy is transferred down, and those shields bulge out during strong storms, or solar storms, and during solar minimum like we're in now, they weaken somewhat. And, but those shields, as they enter into the earth, they create what's called ground currents. And some of the strongest run right through where CERN is situated. Now, you, we've talked about other things in the past, but when you think about the ley lines on earth, um, many people say that there are energy uh, sectors when these ley lines overlap. And the more in certain areas that overlap in that same area, the stronger that the energy waves are, the vortexes or whatever is occurring there. Now, so what we've seen in the last several years is the effect on our shields as CERN cranks up. I'm going to explain a little bit about this chart you're looking at. It is live, by the way, as we were starting the spike on the red line there, which is beam 2, had not occurred, and it got very close to 6,000. Uh, giga electron volts, which is six tera uh, electron volts. They'd like to run it at 7,000 GeV or 7 TeV per beam to collide it and get their 14,000 tera electron volts. That's where the, when they shut down last year, they were hitting that and peaking it. You could tell by the cutoffs on the graphs, and they reached peak uh, illumination, and then they shut it down and started revamping for the last three years but guys these ley lines and these energy lines they transfer energy from like, everything comes from the shields and the, actually those shields uh, we have the Schumann resonance that gives us the vibration of the planet your alpha waves things like that and uh, really has a lot to do with the how you feel, how everyone on the planet feels. And I've always called the natural resonances that we see, the human resonance, the natural uh, flow of our shields, and th the birds feel that. That's how they know to fly north or south, and that's why the um, when you have these events where the shields are, are strange or you've got uh, extreme solar activity, then... You see dolphins beach. You see birds running to buildings, things like that. And it affects humans just as much. We don't have that. We may have initially, but we don't, have not developed that inner sense of magnetic north and south like the animals do. That's how they migrate. Fish, birds, everything. But when that's interfered with, again, what I'm calling the God frequency, the natural frequencies of this planet, your human body, your psyche, your uh, electrochemical uh, physical body, your mind, all of it's affected when you start 
interfering with the earth's shields because they run into ground currents and it i think it definitely affects the ley line currents that those energy fields now there's another problem and this this video could i could do it I'd take an hour to go through it but uh, it would be too long and say there's a, there's another grid that's being built by man and it's called Neuralink, Starlink. You got two, Neuralink, the interface with the human brain, Elon Musk, and Starlink, which is, they're wrapping the globe in these satellites under the guise of providing internet everywhere on the planet, like you really need it. But this shield, I mean, this uh, netting, like the internet or the web, which is a spider web or fish net, both are traps. And so, you've got the natural shields, and CERN's definitely interfering with them. We've seen it collapse the shields on the north and south poles of the planet for years. And we're probably about to see this start to happen again with the magnetic shields. I've already checked them this morning, but the, right now we're cruising at lower power. And I didn't see much effect, but when this thing gets up in there, both of the blue and red lines, beam 1 and beam 2, reaching up towards the six and 7,000, um giga electron votes what you'll see now is the black line actually represents total power the output here so you get the collision of the blue beam and red beam going around the 17 mile underground collider and uh, those collisions are, are what they watch for but with uh, let's go back to starlink a moment as this increases and Starlink completes its netting, do you think that's going to help or um, hurt the God frequency, as I call it? It's not going to, and not only that, because it's a man made shield that they're creating, sure, CERN affects God's shields that he wrapped this planet in. But with Neuralink and Starlink, they can actually not only just interfere with the, inter with the frequencies, they can manipulate them and input into this internet, this web that's being built around our planet. And with that input, they can control mood, sickness. If you do a study on this and look at the, uh, the way this will operate, and the way the shields operate, any interference uh, messes with people. When we have these solar flares, and these incoming CMEs, you, get, you can get headaches, dizziness, all of the above, and many other symptoms. The people can feel it. Well, when they start manipulating that frequency and that with actual input, like AI, to determine the entire population's mood is it going to be everyone's going to be ill mad zombie like or just don't care and that goes back to one other thing before i get into this chart and a couple of others is there's a verse in the bible and uh, it says was this the man and uh, they're talking about uh, the antichrist and with that question, was this the man, the whole world had wondered behind or had uh, completely deceived the world. In other words, it was someone they thought that they was going to be doing good things and helping. And it turned out that as he smiled and appeared to be doing good things, that he was setting himself up to be one of the most powerful persons on the earth. Right? Well... Think about now, <clears throat> Elon Musk. He, you know, you got Tesla cars, you got solar panels, tunnels, everything else, outer space, rockets. But in um, this Neuralink thing, again, which is in the guise of providing internet to the planet, and then the man manipulation that can be controlled, that can control the entire populace via this is something highly dangerous and what has elon musk just done if you've been paying attention 
He's about to take over Twitter. He's doing everything he can. He's got the 40-something, $6 billion now in backing through J.P. Morgan, a couple other banks, and some of his money and his uh, Tesla stocks to buy out Twitter. And he's talking about rearranging the entire thing, making it less censorship, things like that. But we will see what really happens if he gets it. But right now, there's a lot of people that are angry with Twitter worldwide because of censorship, right? From the presidents of the U.S. to um, people like me and you. I don't use it because of the censorship. I, I stopped using it years ago, it in Facebook. And it was just too much garbage. And so when the guys are coming in, kind of like... Uh, a Trump and saying, well, we're going to stop this censorship. It's time to take it back and let free speech reign. Well, and must pass. He's never been that big. A, uh, he never has pressed for free speech that much. He's kind of been in some censorship problems and things like that. So what are we seeing again? And also, I think he's the world's wealthiest man now, if I'm not mistaken. And taking over one of the uh, strongest companies on the planet. And he already owns two or three of them already. So it's just something to think about. Is this the man? And what, what that says is everyone was surprised. What? We thought this and you're that? Think about what I'm saying. Is this the man? That's in the Bible. And it just lets you know that we will, many people will be fooled by the actual entity. But we're at that time to where the minions are already here, and we can see it in the leadership of the planet. And that leader will step forth, and uh, we know the rest of the story. In the bottom section here, just quickly, you've got the link status of the beam permits. Um, that's false. A global beam permit, true. Setup beam is there. Beam presence is there. Movable devices allowed in, false. Stable beams, false. They are not stable yet. They haven't ramped it up to full power. They're going to do this like they've done it every time and build up and see where they have gaps. Again, let's look at the cryogenics and you'll see what I mean. Now, again, this is the LHC cryogenics page. Cryogenics is temperature. It's got to stay down. If you look here, it's below 2 degrees uh, Kel uh, Kelvin. And if it rises above 2 degrees in any of these sections, and what you're seeing here, CMITR1, these are different sections of this collider. All of them have to be kept at a certain temperature in order to work. Well, they're all very stable right here. And this is a combination of each one of these and see how tight the lines are. That's very tight, but they're not at high power yet. You can see one section here where it's a little thinner, and that's when they were extremely close to all being exactly where they needed to be. But they're green. If you remember the video we looked at a few months ago, as they were starting to kind of come in and crank a few machines up, a lot of these areas were red, and they will, you'll see red blocks happen. You'll see the beams quickly dumped. You'll see all the power lower, and some of this start to light up a lot of times when they do that. But right now, they're running just below 2 degrees Kelvin, and uh, everything is like to, is ready to go. They're just going to, when they start cranking things up, they'll find any glitches. Now here we're looking at a different graph of both beams. Beam 1 is on the right, represented by the blue line. Beam 2, excuse me, on the left, and beam 2 is on the right, right there. Now, what they want to do, you've got a vertical and a horizontal here. They want both of these to meet right in the middle. They want this one to meet right in the middle. Why? Because when they go around that large collider, they want them to hit head on. And this is a very large system. So is that power? They're adjusting. It's like a, the wind, windage and elevation on the scope. They've got to get all this centered, both sides. Then they start firing that power up. But that's what you're looking here. And this is called the LHC BSRT. Now going over to the, it's kind of a complete, uh, what they call the operations page. You can see we just had another spike in the red beam. And when you get 7 giga electron volts, or 7,000, that's seven tera electron volts. You get both of those beams up around that point, and that's where they were uh, reaching last 
uh, three years ago when they reached peak luminosity. But you can see all of your instantaneous luminosity, the field luminosity, beam one and all this. They're running. They're just not powered into any collisions yet. And the reason is you saw that the windage and elevation is not right yet. They're just tick kind of cranking it up real slow and easy so they don't blow a main fuse. But uh, again, if you've got information, background one on beam one and uh, beam two's background here. But uh, again, nothing's really powered up here. When you start seeing this beam one, beam two from Atlas, which is the largest section, you got Atlas, CMS, LHCB now in line. You'll start seeing these power up. And that's when we're going to start seeing changes in our magnetopause that we watch during solar. We've got an incoming CME or extreme solar wind. Sometimes we'll watch the what's called the magnetopause graphs. And it's a set of satellites that orbit our Earth that pick up the energy. And they show the position of our Earth shields. You can see it bend in when you've got, um, again, strong solar wind or CME or something like that. But every time, three years ago, when they were running at 14 TeV, it would collapse the shields, especially at the north and south pole. Makes sense, because that's how it feeds in. Now, it interacts with the entire planet, but uh, it's never a good thing to collapse the shields, ever. But every another thing that I always saw is when we had incoming CME, strong uh, solar wind uh, flare, because CERN is located, again, Franco-Swiss border, you've got major ground currents that are induced into the ground that travel around the northern hemisphere, and they are setting right on the uh, largest area. But when we'd see these strong incoming solar events, you could see them crank in and reach peak power. And when they first started, they were using so much power at CERN, guys, they could only run half a day because the people had, it would shut down most of the power to, the cities around there, and they were freezing at night, so they they had to shut that down. But now I think CERN has, they probably went nuke as far as power. I'm sure there's some grid power, but I have noticed them capture energy from the ground currents induced by our shields. But guys, we're going to be watching this. It's very interesting. Let's take a quick look at our website and the article that Tina put up. And again, bpearthwatch.com. Come down, you'll see several articles. She changes those regular. And let's see where, yeah, right here in the middle. Large Hadron Collider restarts after a three-year break. Click there. That's going to bring you to physics.org, and it says Large Hadron Collider restarts after a three-year break. Again, this uh, article is from today. The Large Hadron Collider restarted Friday after a three-year break for upgrades that will allow it to smash protons together at even greater speeds in the hope of making new groundbreaking discoveries. It plans to further study the Higgs boson, the existence of, of which it proved in 2012, and put the standard model of, of particle physics to the test after several recent anomalies raised questions about one fundamental understanding of how the universe works. Two beams of protons circulated in opposite directions around the Large Hadron Collider's 27-kilometer or 17-mile ring just after noon on Friday. Europhysics Lab CERN said in the statement, Buried more than 100 meters or 330 feet beneath the border of Switzerland and France, the collider has been closed since de December 2018. Many of you remember the last video we did then. It was for maintenance and upgrades, the second longest shutdown in its 14-year history. They're saying to start with, the colliders taking it easy. A relatively small number of protons were circulated at an energy of 450 B in electron volts. Remember, they're going to go, they're now, if you look at it, you're going from giga electron to tera electron volts. High intensity, high energy collisions are a couple months away, the head of CERN's beam department. Roger Jones said, CERN said it, it, its experts will work around the clock to get the collider ready to set a new record of 13.6 trillion electron volts. Guys, um, they, we have seen 14 tera electron volts before. And uh, like I said, the uh, graphs were, you could tell they were clipping at 14 tera electron volts. And that tells you the peaks were spiking a little higher. Now, this is an image. 
you can come here and watch this video. But uh, the kind of the office section of CERN is right here. And this is a copy of the Tesla antenna on the big one he built in New York. It can broadcast from there if it decided to or receive energy. But again, it's getting a lot of the power from the grand ground currents back to the right under there. Can't see it is the 330 foot below the surface 17 mile long tunnel. It's amazing. You, if you haven't seen some of the videos there, they ride bicycles through there like a large construction project. And these engineers, as they check different components, it's huge. Now, you've got to ask yourself, why are they spending this much money now with the world economy in the situation it is? You've got migration in all borders. You've got the lockdowns. You've got uh, food prices going up, gasoline prices going up, protests across the planet. And the by the way, if you're not familiar with the way CERN operates, it's from people all around the world, and they live there tax-free billions and trillions of dollars are spent here and but while the world is in chaos why is it so important for the powers that be to have this going on that's the million dollar question the reopening will also start or will be the starting gun for four years of massive data collecting and analyzing by the collider's four main experiments the collider's new phase of exploration comes at an interesting time for particle physics, with the standard model, model failing to account for several recent measurements, as well as for dark matter, which is thought to make up significant amount of the universe. Harry Cliff, a particle physicist at Cambridge, told AFP last month that several recent anomalies indicated that our current theory of the standard model seems to be breaking down. Yeah, just like your models that will never connect solar flares with earthquakes or volcanic eruption so your models are pretty poor cliff said the particles called beauty quarks with which he works on it at the large hadron collider seems to be uh being influenced by a force that was never detected before and that new section is called lhcb that's what they're looking for why is it so important now, that dark energy? There's, they've been building this body of evidence that we're about to discover something new affecting beauty quartz, which would be a really big deal, he said. Maybe there's a new force or fifth force of nature that we haven't seen before. But you're dealing with fallen angel technology, in my opinion, much as we were dealing with it uh, with the uh, A-bomb test. When you're doing that, everything's in departments. Everything is sectioned off. Someone who has designed this, who designed the A-bombs, they knew exactly what was going to happen, right? Remember in the Old Testament, they talk about fallen angels building the cities and teaching man war and weapons and all of this. Same thing's happening now. But the people at the top, the head of this, knows exactly what he's looking for. And he's got the scientists and the money of the planet focused on that. But it's in a, each section of this, each scientist, more than likely, doesn't know what the other scientists are doing. Everything's in departments so that you can't have a full breach of security and a full breach of all the information that's been stored, pulled out by one person or one computer. So each one knows what they know. And But the guy at the top knows exactly what they're looking for, this fifth force of nature. What will it be? All we can do is watch, guys. And I'm doing it. You watch it. It's a heads up. Be safe.